Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing safe. So I don't know if you've noticed this, but there are some American tech YouTubers or American tech reviewers for mainstream publications, you know, like CNET or Wall Street Journal, where just from watching their work, you can tell they are a full-time Apple user. Like they'll be reviewing a new OnePlus phone or a new Samsung phone, and they'll be wearing an Apple Watch. And that gives away the fact that the iPhone is the daily driver, the, the SIM cards in the iPhone, because the Apple Watch cannot work with a OnePlus or Samsung device. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Particularly in America, that's just the way of life. If you walk in a coffee shop in Los Angeles or New York and you see 10 phones, seven of them are gonna be iPhones. It is what it is. You know, in the US, you have the whole iMessage locking thing. It doesn't help that you don't have much options in the US anyway. Really, if you step into the store and you're trying to buy a phone, it's either iPhone or Samsung. That's it. They don't have the options that we have out here in Asia. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I am not one of those people. I'm not locked into any single ecosystem. I don't have a particular brand loyalty. I use whatever the gadget is best at the time. So for phones, you see me switching phones basically every other week. I'll be using an iPhone one week, a Galaxy Fold the next week, an Opal phone the next. However, for tablets, I've been consistently using an iPad either iPad Air or iPad Pro as my main tablet for years. And only up until recently when Samsung made the excellent Galaxy Tab S8 and Galaxy Tab S7 did another tablet kind of close the gap a little bit. Before the Galaxy Tab S8 and S7, I would say nothing came close to an iPad. The iPad was just the best tablet around. And now with the new iPad Air 2022, Apple's gonna once again push the lead a little bit further. Like if you are an average person on the market for a tablet, this is the one to get. As much as I like the Galaxy Tab S8, this is still the one to get. So this is my review. Okay, so this is the new iPad Air 2022. Other than the fact that I got some new fun colors like blue and purple, nothing has changed in terms of looks. In, in fact, the dimensions, weight, screen size, screen resolution, everything's exactly the same as the iPad Air 2020. So there are only a couple of areas that's new with the iPad Air 2022. The first, the most important, is the chip inside got upgraded to M1. I don't think I need to go over M1 again, but now most of you guys know, right? It's Apple's own silicon. It's super powerful and it's being used in all of Apple's MacBooks right now. So the fact that the same chip that's powering a 27 inch iMac or a new MacBook Air, it's in this iPad Air that's this thin and starts at only 599 US dollars. It's pretty crazy. But anyway, more on that later. So the second upgrade is the front facing camera, the, the webcam. It's a 12 megapixel ultra wide webcam now. So that's good for video calls because now you get Apple's center stage. When you move around the frame, the camera will focus on your face and it works really well. Samsung tried to do the same with the Galaxy Tab S8, it just does not work as well. Now the iPad Air is really light at only one pound. However, you're probably not gonna use the iPad just like this as a tablet, right? I feel like this is a waste of the M1. With a chip as powerful as the M1, it's basically a computer chip. You're gonna wanna use this as a computer. So you're gonna have to get a keyboard case. There's gonna be some third party cases that'll be out soon, but Apple has the magic keyboard that you just snap on. And it's an awesome design. It lifts the display up a little bit, so it's like a floating design. Offers protection for the front, and it has an excellent trap pad, despite the fact that the trap pad is so small. This is the best trap pad in any tablet ever. Better than the Galaxy Tab S6 trap pad. However, the keyboard's a little bit heavy. It's actually 1.3 pounds. It's heavier than the iPad itself. So now combined, this package is 2.3 pounds, still pretty light, still lighter than a laptop, but it is no longer super, super light. So since the iPad Air is running on the M1 now, it's fair to compare it against the iPad Pro, the 2021 model, which also runs on an M1. Now, despite the fact that I have the higher spec version of the iPad Pro, this is one terabyte with 16 gigs of RAM compared to just eight gigs of RAM here. Performance is very, very similar. That's a testament to how efficient the M1 is. So I did a Luma Fusion 4K 60 video. So I did a 4K 60 video rendering test. I rendered a seven and a half minute long 4K 60 video. And the iPad Air and iPad Pro basically rendered and finished at the exact same time. And it was very fast. It took eight minutes to render and export a seven and a half minute 4K 60 video. That is very fast on an Intel MacBook 
when Android tablet, it probably take like 15 minutes or more. Likewise, on Geekbench, the iPad Pro, this model I have, only beats the iPad Air slightly in multi-core, and it's still very, very close. In fact, iPad Air's Geekbench number still kills anything in Android, including the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Now, moving on to the 3D Mark Wildlife test as an intensive graphics test, Finally, the iPad Pro wins a little bit more clearly. So you have to really push graphics really hard just to see a victory for the iPad Pro. Otherwise, if you're doing video editing, any other productivity task, performance will be exactly the same between these two. And that makes the iPad Air a really good deal because this thing starts at $600. So for $600, you get basically the same performance as a spec out iPad Pro with 16 gigs of RAM. So the M1 is so efficient that the extra RAM here almost doesn't matter unless you're really, really pushing it. Now that's not to say there are no differences between these two devices. So the iPad Pro has a better screen. It's a mini LED panel. So that means the, the blacks get a little bit deeper. The reds are punchier. It's kind of like an OLED panel, but different technology. And the iPad Pro screen gets noticeably brighter too. Maximum brightness over 1000 nits. On the iPad Air, only 500 nits. However, the iPad Air screen is still more than perfectly usable outdoors. The iPad Pro's display also refreshes at 120 hertz, while the iPad Air only is stuck at 60 hertz. Now, the iPad Air's bezels are also a little bit thicker than the iPad Pro. This is a surprise considering the iPad Pro houses a Face ID facial scanning system in the bezels. So the iPad Air does not have Face ID. Instead, you unlock using a fingerprint scanner. Now, the other noticeable difference is there's only two speakers in the iPad Air, whereas you get four speakers in the iPad Pro, and the iPad Pro gets significantly louder and fuller sound. Now the Pro and the Air have the exact same 12 megapixel front facing camera, but around the back, you can see the Pro has a more capable camera system. They have the same 12 megapixel main camera, but then the iPad Pro also has an ultra wide camera and a LiDAR scanner. Now the extra ultra wide camera here doesn't really matter to me because I am not gonna carry an iPad Pro out and about to take photos. However, the LiDAR scanner could make a difference if you care about AR apps. So the LiDAR scanner is basically like a radar. It will map. Now AR apps still work here in the iPad Air. They just won't be as precise as on the iPad Pro. Now one more difference between these two machines is the iPad Pro has a little bit better battery life because it's bigger, so it has a larger battery. However, battery life on the iPad Air is still pretty good. I can still get about nine, 10 hours of regular consistent use on a single charge and charging is done via USB-C, which is great. Now, other than all the things I just mentioned, everything else between the iPad Air and the iPad Pro is exactly the same. So they run on the same software. They will both work with a Magic Keyboard. They will both work with an Apple Pencil. Overall experience, it's gonna be the same. So that means if you're on the market for a new iPad, the iPad Air may be a better value because this starts at $600, whereas the iPad Pro starts at $800. However, the iPad Pro starts at 128 gigs of internal storage, whereas the iPad Air starts at 64 gigs of internal storage. Now, 64 gigs in 2022 is pretty low, but if you have an iCloud subscription, that may not be a big deal. Now, because the iPad Air is lighter and thinner, this is, in my opinion, a more comfortable tablet to just use on the sofa when you're laying in bed, just holding it on like, you know, like this, watching videos going on Instagram. It's a little bit more easy to do this with the iPad Air than on the heavier, bulkier iPad Pro or the gigantic Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. Now, despite that, the iPad Air still works really well as a work machine because um, iPad OS lets you run up to two apps at the same time now. You can have a third app in a floating window. It's still not as much multitasking as I like because if I'm using the Galaxy Tab S8, I can open like four apps, five apps at the same time if I want. You can't do that here, but I think two apps at once, it's enough for me to get my work done. So I've been doing work off of this machine and I've had no issues. The keyboard trackpad is the best in the business. Even though the keyboard and trackpad here is a little bit smaller on the iPad Air than on the iPad Pro, I can still type at my maximum speed. Now, as much as I like the Galaxy Tab S8, the iPad Air is still a little bit more polished all around. The trackpad is definitely more responsive and precise. Gestures on iPad OS work a little bit better than gestures on the Galaxy Tab S8. And ultimately, despite Samsung's really good effort at trying to make Android apps work better, 
There's still some minor scaling issues here and there. Apps still work better on an iPad because app developers spent way more time building for iPad than they do on Android. It's unfortunate, I really hope they fix that problem. But until they do, apps will always run a little bit more seamlessly on an iPad than they do on any Android tablet, despite Samsung's best efforts. Like I really admire what Samsung has done. They have made Android tablets much more usable than before because I have a Xiaomi tablet, I have a Huawei tablet, and as much as I like the hardware, I just can't use it full time because apps don't look good on Android tablet. Now, if you get an iPad, you won't have to worry about that problem. Most of the important apps anyway will be optimized for iPad OS. And now with the M1 chip, it is way more powerful than anything out in Android. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, it's a really powerful chip, but not M1 level. If you're rendering 4K videos, you will see a difference between the iPad Air and the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. So overall, despite the progress that Samsung has made the Galaxy Tab S8 series, I still think the iPad is the best tablet in the world. And of all the tablets right now, the iPad Air is the most versatile tablet for most people. Like the iPad mini, it's cute, it's very portable, but it's probably too small to do real work. The iPad Pro, awesome, super powerful, beautiful screen, but it might be a little bit bulky to use in bed and to carry around the house. This is like the happy medium. This is a tablet that you can use to play mobile games. It's a good size. You can watch movies on the couch, you can take it to any room in the house to do a Zoom call, and you can work if you need to, because the screen is still large enough and the keyboard is excellent. So anyway, this is my review of the iPad Air 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a lot more content coming up, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.